In this video, we're going to see how the small signal model can be used to analyze this circuit that consists of one, two field effect transistors. So we have two stages cascaded one after the other. You'll notice on this first stage, the transistor's gate is grounded, and the signal to be amplified is connected through, of course here it's just um, the source resistance of the signal, but then we also have a source resistor, a resistor connected to the source of the first transistor. And then the second transistor has the gate tied to the drain of the first through a DC blocking capacitor. So this second transistor is in a common source configuration with the gain, um, the gain resistor RD2, 20 kilo ohm resistance here. You'll notice that both transistors are biased using constant current sources, and we'll take that into account here in just a second. But the point I'd like you to see, first of all, is that there are two separate stages. This first one is a common gate. The gate is granted with the signal applied to the source part of this first stage. And the second is a common source where the, um, the signal that we're interested in amplifying, or the input signal for the second stage, is coming from the drain of the first going into the gate of the second, and then the output is taken at the drain of the second. Again, you'll notice these capacitors that are meant to be short circuits at the signal frequencies of interest. So this will be a short. This one here shorts out the, the, uh, the biasing current source. So in the small signal model, this point here will be pulled to ground. This capacitor here and this capacitor here will, similarly to this capacitor, be short circuits. The purpose is just to block DC um, quantities so that the DC bias is not affected by any DC components here. So we've got this circuit here, and the first thing we need to do is determine our small signal model. And to do that, we need to know, first of all, G sub M1 and G sub M2. Well, in general, G sub M is equal to K sub N um, times V O V. You'll notice that we've been given a K sub N equal to 1 milliamp per volt squared. The threshold voltage is 1 volt. The gate to source voltage on the first transistor is 5 volts, and the gate to source voltage on the second transistor is 3 volts. So we can then calculate G sub M1 is equal to K sub N, which is just 1 milliamp times VOV, which for this first one is 5 volts minus 1, so 1 times 5 minus 1 is 4 milliamps per volt. We need to be careful with the units. Uh, K, sub M, K sub N is in terms of milliamps, so G sub M is in terms of milliamps. And similarly, G sub M2 is going to equal um, K sub N times VGS is 3 minus 1 gives us a G sub M2 of being of uh, 2 milliamps per volt. Now we'll proceed by going ahead and dry, uh, drawing the small signal model. Now for the first stage, because we have a source resistance in here elevating the source, I'm going to use the T model on this first stage so that we have the um, current source there, which will be VGS1 times G sub M1. We have the resistor 1 over G sub M. And then we have this source resistance we're calling R sub S. And then coming in here, we have R sig and V sig, the signal of interest right there. coming to ground. Now, the gate is grounded, so we're going to bring this to ground and note that the current going into the gate there is zero. Now we've got this one kilo ohm resistor, which is tied to the, the DC source. So when we deactivate the source for the small signal model, this point here will be pulled to ground. So that one kilo ohm resistor is going to come down here like that to ground. We're calling that RD1 for now. And that point there then is the gate of the second um, transistor. 
Now, in this case, with the shorting, with the uh, capacitor here, the source is grounded. So on this one, I'm going to use the hybrid pi model. And for that, then we just have the current source coming down here to ground. That will be G sub M2 times VGS2. That comes to ground. And here we have RD2 which is connected to the source, or to the uh, drain of the second transistor on one side, and then it's tied to the power supply on the other, which when it's deactivated pulls that point to ground. So we have RD2 here going to ground, and we also, when this is a short circuit here, R sub L will also be going to ground. So I'm going to just show this here as the parallel combination of RD2 in parallel with R sub L, and we will make that then V out. And we have our two stages reduced down to the small signal model. And we're ready to start um, our analysis. Let's first of all note that both of these current sources are dependent upon the gate to source voltage of each of the transistors. So in this transistor right here, VGS1, well there's the gate and there is the source, so VGS1 is that voltage right there, VGS1, referenced with a positive terminal at the gate and the negative reference terminal at the source, so it's plus to minus like that. Now VGS2 will be the voltage from there to there, and we'll notice that that voltage is the voltage from the gate to ground because the source is grounded on the second transistor. So that then, this voltage here is the gate voltage all the way along here. So we're going to be able to get VGS2 as just being the voltage across RD1. So let's go ahead and start our analysis by writing an expression for V out. I think it's pretty straight to see that there's V out is going to be the current flowing in that direction. That current is just G sub M2 times VGS2. So we can start off by saying that V out is equal to negative G sub M2 VGS2 times the parallel combination of RD2 in parallel with R sub L. All right. V out in terms of VGS2, and our purpose is to work our way back until we get the entire thing written V out in terms of V sig. So we need to get VGS2 in terms of, what can we get it in terms of? Not quite yet to all the way, we can't go all the way to V sig just yet, but we've already noted that VGS2, voltage across there, is just the voltage across to RD1. And we've got this current coming like that, no current going into the gate. So we can then write that VGS2 is equal to negative VGS1 times G sub M1 times RD1. So we now have VGS2 in terms of VGS1. Now, to get VGS1 in terms of something else working closer to the source, let's just take a look at what VGS1 is. VGS1 is the voltage across from the gate to the source. Now, if we define Vn as the voltage from the point where the source ties into our amplifier, relative to ground, if we call that V in, then we can see that the voltage across here is just the subdivided portion. V in is across those two resistors. So VGS1 will just be the voltage across that resistor right there. And we can get that using voltage division, but notice that V in is referenced positive to negative here, and VGS1 is referenced positive here and negative there. So they're referenced in opposite directions. So I'm going to go ahead and write that a um, VGS1 is equal to negative VN 
times the voltage divider formula 1 over G sub M1 divided by 1 over G sub M1 plus R sub S. And you may want to stop the video there and just see what I've done, but I'm going to take it one step further and simplify this this part here where I've got compound fractions by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by G sub M1, and I'll have then that that is equal to negative Vn times 1 over 1 plus G sub M1 times R sub S. Now I've just about worked my way back to having things in terms of V sig. I've got V in, and what we see here is that V sig is the voltage, this is zero volts, that point right there is V sig, and V in is the portion of V sig that we would see across the series resistance R sub S plus one over G sub M. By the way, that's a G sub M one there. So we can say then, again, using a voltage divider and noting that this is the positive V-sig terminal here relative to ground and this is the positive V-in terminal relative to ground. So we can then say that V-in is equal to V-sig times these two resistors. It's a voltage divider we're going to be doing here. 1 over G sub M1 plus R sub S divided by the total resistance there which is 1 over G sub M1 plus R sub S plus R sig. And again just to clean this fraction up if we multiply numerator and denominator by G sub M1 we get then that V in is equal to V sig times, again get the divider in here, 1 plus G sub M1 times R sub S over 1 plus R sub S plus R sig times G sub M1. Now let's take a look at what we've done. We started out with V out as a function of VGS2. We then wrote VGS2 as a function of VGS1. We then wrote VGS1 as a function of VN. We then wrote VN as a function of VSIG. So we're now ready to come, and we'll do it on over here. We can now write that V out is equal to negative G sub M2 times the parallel combination of RD2 in parallel with R sub L. So that's that term and that term times VGS2. But VGS2 is, and I'm going to bring this minus sign right here, there's the minus sign, G sub M1, R D1, times VGS1. Well, VGS1, close that parenthesis there, VGS1 is equal to a negative VN times that term. Let me just write this as a negative 1 over... 1 plus G sub M1 times R sub S times V in, but V in is this thing here times V sig, so let's just write it as, put the, the fraction in here first. I've got a 1 in the numerator, 1 plus G sub M1 times R sub S, and then in the denominator I have 1 plus R sub, R sub S plus R sig times G sub M1. And then that whole thing is multiplied by V sig. Now let's just go ahead and divide both sides by V sig. And we then have our gain term is equal to that. Now we'll notice that there's just a little bit of cleaning up that we can do here. We've got a 1 plus G sub M1 RS term here in the denominator and the same term there in the numerator. So those two terms cancel. Now let's just go ahead and rewrite this then a little bit cleaner. We've got then G, the overall gain, V out over V sig 
is equal to, let's count up the minus signs, 1, 2, 3 minus signs. So there's a net inversion in this thing here. We're going to have a numerator and a denominator. So in the numerator, I've got g sub m1, g sub m2. I've got the parallel combination of um, rd2 in parallel with r sub l. And then I have the rd1 term up there. And then in the denominator, we've got 1 plus r sub s plus r sig times g sub m1. Now, plugging in the values, up here we had g sub m1 equal to 4 milliamps, g sub m2, 2 milliamps. So we're going to have then that this is equal to negative. g sub m1 was 4, and I'm going to work in terms of milliamps and kiloohms. 4 times 2, rd2 in parallel with r sub l. Rd2 is 20 kiloohms, kilo r sub l is 20 kiloohms. The parallel combination of that will be 10, again, kiloohms times Rd1. Rd1 is 1 kiloohm divided by 1 plus R sub S is 100 ohms. R sig is 50 ohms. So that's going to be 150 ohms, but I'm working in terms of kiloohms. So that would be um, plus 0.15 times G sub M. That's a G sub M1, which is 4. So 0.15 times 4, and you go through and you work out the math there, you get that's equal to 80 divided by 1 plus point 1 plus, come on, you can do it there, 1 plus point 6, and that works out to give us a gain, overall gain of, I left off a minus sign there, an overall gain of minus 50 volts per volt. So the output V out is going to be 50 times whatever the input signal was with a sign inversion.